Hey, y'all, check out the audiobook of Lou Rockwell's Fascism vs. Capitalism, narrated by me, Scott Horton, at audible.com. It's a great collection of his essays and speeches on the important tradition of liberty. From medieval history to the Ron Paul Revolution, Rockwell blasts our status enemies, profiles our greatest libertarian heroes, and prescribes the path forward in the battle against Leviathan. Fascism vs. Capitalism by Lou Rockwell for audiobook. Find it at Audible, Amazon, iTunes, or just click in the right margin of my website at scotthorton.org. All right, you guys, welcome to the show. I'm Scott Horton. Um, it's the Scott Horton Show. Check out the archives at scotthorton.org. The new and improved scotthorton.org. Uh, now HTTPS and everything. New and improved scotthorton.org. All the archives there, 4,000-something interviews going back to 2003 for you there. Send me emails about bugs if you find them. And, uh, of course, libertarianinstitute.org. That's where we've got it going on now. Uh, libertarianinstitute.org me will Griggs, Sheldon richmond and jerry labelle there uh follow me on twitter at scott horton show okay uh introducing our friend nasser arabi he's a journalist uh from and based out of sana yemen and uh he's written in the past for the carnegie endowment website and a couple other western sources and he has his own uh news organization in yemen it's called Yemen now. Uh, yeah, Yemen now. It's Yemen Alan A L A A N Yemen dash Alan dot com, and uh, very happy to welcome him back to the show. Hi, Nasser. How are you, sir? Uh, thank you very much, and uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, appreciate you. Um, okay, so we're at uh, I think twenty two months now, almost two solid years of American backed. Saudi air war against, uh, well, the government, uh, the new government and the people of Yemen. Uh, so I guess the, the first thing is first here. Can you please uh, describe for us, if you could, uh, and take as much time as you need to, uh, what, what would you have the people, especially of the United States, understand about the humanitarian crisis in Yemen now? How many people have been killed how many wounded, uh, how many uh, going hungry, these kinds of things? What I want to start with is uh, to tell your audience that it's it's a catastrophic. It's a very catastrophic situation here in terms of humanitarian things because of this uh, U.S.-backed Saudi aggression. Because um, especially uh, Saudi Arabia from the very beginning, uh, focused on how to uh, use the uh, economic and humanitarian things as a tool uh, to uh, uh, to impose what Saudi wanted uh, here in Yemen. And uh, uh, this is why it is a uh, catastrophe. Uh, again, uh, over 60,000 Civilians were killed now, over 60,000. I am one of the most important observers from the very beginning of this war. For every massacre, every single Yemeni killed, everywhere from the very beginning. Uh, in addition to our army of, uh, of Yemenis, of course, and in Europe. But the problem is that when I'm saying now 60,000 Yemeni or civilians, Yemeni civilians were killed. Many people all over the world, inside Yemen and outside Yemen, would say, no, UN is saying 10,000. I would tell them, I would tell everybody, like I told today, the UN chief, UN chief in Yemen, uh, Jimmy Michael Drake. I told him today, and I posted a tweet, you can see it in a video. I told him today about this number. I told him, I, I just reminded him when he and his staff bought this number one year ago. I told him in his office today, and it is now a video. You can see it, and your uh, audience can see it in my Twitter now. What he said, what did he say? He just said that more than 50% of health facilities in Yemen are destroyed and not uh, functioning anymore. 
so we don't have any documents so we can't uh, we can't have uh, we can't have uh, we can't document we can't have any uh, nobody can give us any uh, uh, statistics or documents so this is the reason that UN is saying today why they don't have new or updated statistics of the Yemenis who were killed. They said no health uh, facilities functioning anymore. Which right. Means now, I'm sorry. Now, so let, 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 me, let me stop you for just a yes. second. Um, I'm sorry. I just couldn't understand what you said. I just needed to turn you up at the time. I missed exactly what you said. What is the source for the 60,000? How do you know that it's 60,000? Yes, that, that's good. Yes, this, this is a good thing. Um, the thought I have is from the local group and from my, obje- uh, uh, from my observation as Yemeni, as a journalist, and uh, as I told you, I counted, I observed all massacres. So we have a rough number or rough figure of 60,000 civilians who were killed so far, including, including those who died of illness and hunger because of this uh, aggression. If you can see the video, the UN chief uh, agreed with me. He didn't disagree. He didn't say anything, but he said, we can't do anything because we don't have documents. But mm. he said he knows that uh, the number he said is very silly and that uh, the, the number that uh, the media is using now is very, very, very low than, than, the, than, the, than the reality. Everybody knows it. So many lo- local uh, 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 human rights groups and many local groups here uh, have even more than 60, but, but they, 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 they just bought the those who were injured also to say about 60, 65, and, and 70, uh, uh, between 50 to 70,000. Uh, they, they are different uh, in these numbers, the local, uh, the local groups. UN bought this number is one year ago. It's enough for you. It's enough as an evidence that this number is very old, not updated. And the UN chief told me today, uh, that uh, the facility, the health facilities are not functioning to document any any new numbers or any new casualties since uh, one year. Yeah. Well, and now so this it's is a problem. Sure. Well, it's been almost two full let years me, of let, war. Let me let me just give you a general view of the other thing. So about sixty thousand killed, about three three million displaced, homeless, about. 20 million of 30, about 20 million, that is two-thirds of the Yemenis, are food insecure now, food insecure. Uh, if, you, uh, if, you want to give, if, you, if you want me to give you an example, what I mean by this, the, the blockade, the blockade uh, uh, makes this problem because Yemen imports about 90% of its food from outside Yemen, and now it's blockaded. It's blockaded now from air, from sea, and uh, from the land by Saudi Arabia. This is uh, the humanitarian uh, situation, and you can ask your question. Yeah. Well, and now I wanted to point out for people who are new to this topic that uh, here we are almost two years of war, 22 months uh, into this air war, and really there had been conflict going on, of course, before the Saudis started bombing even. Um but at the time, all the human rights groups said that this is the poorest country in the Middle East and that they're com- almost entirely dependent on imports for their food resources here. 80 to 90 percent of their food before was traded in from abroad. And uh, all of this has been disrupted. And, you know, of course, people adapt somewhat. But at the same time, too, uh, even Oxfam this, and them are saying people are starving. Yes. Yes. Let me add one thing. People now in the South and North did not have salaries for six months now. People who are in the North and who are in the South, who are under uh, Saudi-backed appointed president or Saudi-appointed president in in Hadi, 
they didn't have their salaries as well because of the problem of the uh, uh, of the central bank. They uh, dismantled the, the bank, and uh, now it is not uh, functioning anymore, uh, and the people are without salaries. Right, and now... Um... Well, let me ask you this: Is is any food uh, or you know relief getting through at all? Because they've said that they relaxed the blockade and that now the humanitarian groups can can bring in food. Is that working at all? Yes, uh, we can't deny these things. There are many attempts. There are many successful attempts uh, from the relief organizations, UN or others. They are doing some some good jobs, yes, but it is not enough. You know, they 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 risk their their, their lives and they they help, but it's not enough at all. We uh, we can see here what is happening here in Sanaa. They uh, they can of course go to every place and every single man or woman and help, uh, but they are helping. They are doing their 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 best, but it is very short. It is it is not enough at all at all because. Uh, as I told you, it is uh, a systematic. This is a. It is something done deliberately by Saudi Arabia to uh, make Yemeni uh, nail down, to make Yemeni uh, surrender, uh, which will not happen. Of course, uh, I will tell you later about the military and the preparations uh, of all these things. But uh, this is what Saudi wanted to do. Uh, they want to say, okay, now we want uh, we, we will surrender. No, uh, Yemeni will not uh, at all surrender. They get uh, stronger and stronger in terms of fighting, of course, in terms of fighting. Yeah. Well, yeah, so um, tell me about the ground war and the air war, I guess specifically in the south of the country now. The, the so-called government, the Hadi government backed by Saudi and America is based out of Aden still, right? Yes. And how much territory do they control uh, around the port city of Aden? There? So in the in the south, which is uh, the south of the country, uh, is about uh, let, me, let, me, let me say fifty percent. Let me say fifty percent. Fifty percent south, fifty percent uh, north. Uh, they control only Aden, and Aden is not secure even for President Hadi. Mm-hmm. Well, now, not only this, even in the south, for example, the south now is under their name. You know, they are they take control over them in a way or another, right? But they don't serve people. They don't do anything. Who? I mean, Qaeda and ISIS is the one who provides the social services, like uh, education, like uh, uh, health, like uh, uh, food, and uh, other things. Uh, Hadi does not do anything uh, at all. This is this is the, mo- the, the the most dangerous problem, and the evidence for this is that Hadi could not even pay salary for the his people. Although uh, uh, he received now about uh, 200 billion, about 200 billion Yemeni rials, of course, uh, uh, as a cash, uh, new printed uh, cash from uh, from Russia. So they, uh, but he could not until now pay the salaries for the uh, for the government uh, employee because of the data, the data, the central data, and the central document, the central bank documents are still here in Sanaa. It is not easy to just to uh, to 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 give uh, people money and you don't have the documents and you have the, you don't have the payrolls and these things. So it is still difficult even for Hadi to give the, uh, the, 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 the salary for the people. This is why it is, it is difficult. Mm-hmm. Well, and uh, there have been some reports that the uh, UAE and Saudi forces have been battling against al-Qaeda. Now, of course, overall, they're fighting against the Houthis, who are also al-Qaeda's enemies. But is it true that the Saudi forces have been fighting against the jihadists, too? This is, this is one of the biggest uh, liars. No, it is a big lie. It is not right at all because uh, uh, Hadi, and even in a way, let me tell you Hadi, Hadi 
has only Hadi has only Qaeda and ISIS leaders who have been, who, who are his allies. He don't have any other allies than than the, than the Islamic uh, the Brotherhood Party uh, that most of its leaders are Qaeda ISIS and they are in in Riyadh and they are blacklisted by uh, U.S. Uh, Treasury Department. And I mentioned many times to you, seven of them. Seven of them are uh, blacklisted by U.S. Uh, uh, Treasury Department as global terrorists and uh, uh, violent. So these people are the, are, uh, the, uh, the people who are around Hadi in Riyadh and in Aden, and they are uh, leading their people in the ground, and their people on the ground are two different uh, groups, one brotherhood and one Salafi. The Salafi ones are under Emirates, and the Emirates and the Brotherhood is under Saudi Arabia, under Hadi and Saudi Arabia, and they are fighting in these in all these cities uh, that they control now, in Taiz, uh, in the city, and in Aden, and in some uh, other cities in Hadramut like Mukalla or Sayun. So they are fighting with each other. Unfortunately, they could not, uh, the clashes don't stop even one day. For example, uh, Aden uh, witnessed clashes for the five, for the last five days, uh, 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 day by day. Uh, why? You, 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 uh, uh, they say, or the people say that uh, this, is, this group is with Emirates and this group is with Saudi Arabia and this group is with that, and this is, you know, so there is no uh, one leadership, unfortunately. They are fighting with each other. Mm. All right, now, um, you know, it seems kind of strange, uh, even after two years of war here, doesn't it, that the Houthis, who never, they've never controlled the capital city, the, the Zaydi Shia from up in the north before, um, but now it seems like they have a, a pretty solid hold on the capital, but that's what this whole thing is about, right? Is that the Saudis can't stand it, that the Houthis control the capital city, and that's why they launched the war. Is there any way to negotiate that so that the the Saudis could be placated or the Houthis could share power with some other faction or something that where, where both sides could come to an agreement here? Houthis is very open. Houthi is very open. Uh, Houthi now is a symbol for the for all the national uh, forces, not only Houthi. The most important one is the Saleh uh, Bati, the former uh, president and the former uh, ruling Bati is a, is, a, is a very important ally with, with Houthi. Uh, so um, they are open to anyone. And, and unfortunately, uh, Saudi Arabia does not even want to uh, uh, to to uh, to recognize with uh, with what they are doing. Although they know that the people, the, the the ambassadors, the ambassadors of all the states that uh, sponsor this uh, uh, this uh, uh, UN uh, these talks, if we can say. Uh, these uh, ambassadors keep saying that Sana'a is the, ba- the safe place for any talk. Sana'a is the safe place for any dialogue. Because, because they know, including Kerry, uh, John Kerry, he said Sana'a is the safe place for any talk, for any uh, talking about anything. If you want to, uh, he said this many times, because they know that now, for example, we, are, uh, we have been for two years now, and uh, at least now for 16 months, you, we haven't seen any bombings here in Sa'a, except from the, from the sky, the air strikes. But uh, no problem at all. Uh, it's, a, it's a government now. It's a, uh, there is a government. There is a presidential council. Uh, there is a parliament. Uh, and uh, all the, the institutions of the state are, are working, working according to the law and order. There are many people who, who, who disagree with the war. There are many people who oppose Houthi. There are and they express themselves. There are strikes. There are demonstrations. This is the Salah now. Under all these war crimes. So 
there is uh, there is no emergency state. There is law and order here in Sanaa, and they Saudi Arabia did not want this at all. So they are doing everything to sabotage this uh, stability and this uh, calm in Sanaa, and and they they um, uh, escalate the battle in about um, 11 now, in about 11 battles now. Not only in the border of, with Saudi Arabia, uh, the, uh, in the border with Saudi Arabia is only one gun, um, but there are now about, uh, about 10 more here, including the coastal, the western uh, coast of Sudan. They want to, uh, they want, or they have been trying to take over the Bab al Mandab Strait, which is the strategic, uh, the most uh, important. Uh, straight uh, and uh, where about four uh, million barrels uh, go uh, the, the gate of the Red every, Sea you're saying every day mm -hmm. yes in the Red Sea yes so they, they, they want to they tried over the last few days to uh, control but unfortunately they were defeated and um, in one day uh, they lost uh, about uh, 140 and 100 soldiers and about uh, 25 tanks and uh, uh, and vehicles and this was documented by the war media that everybody saw it is not just uh, talking or propaganda and it was a big big defeat uh, because they, they thought that uh, the, uh, the, the, the the commander of the uh, of the of the operation killed in the first hour. And you can just imagine how uh, they was they were planning in this uh, in this uh, in this party or in this big operation. The first in the first hour the commander uh, uh, was killed. The commander of the of the army uh, of the of the operation here uh, there in Babel Manda. Great. Well I am sorry there's so many different questions I want to ask you but um I guess uh, I'm really running out of time here. Can we just can you tell me about the the blowback for Saudi, where the Houthi forces? Because after all, they're from the north anyway, right? And you've talked about on the show before how they've invaded Saudi Arabia now in response, and they've launched missiles and they've attacked towns on the Saudi side of the border. Is that still going on? Um, do they mean to actually stay, or they're just harassing yes, the Saudis? The problem now. Yes, there are many efforts now. UN is still uh, working many efforts to help, but Saudi Arabia is supporting. Saudi Arabia is uh, unfortunately spoiling everything. Why? Because Saudi Arabia wants one thing. One thing. What is it? Saudi Arabia wants Yemeni, Yemeni fighters to withdraw from its territory. From its Territories in the south, Najran, Beidan, and Asir. Not positions, but villages and towns. I'm talking about villages and towns and their Yemeni fighters. This is a fact since uh, uh, 16, 16 months now. Rabua, for example, Rabua city is under Yemeni fighters. Many other villages are under Yemeni fighters. Uh, uh, I'm not talking about positions and strategic positions, no. I'm talking about villages and uh, uh, cities that, that are under the Yemeni fighters. And those who are still under uh, Saudi villages, the Saudi uh, forces, they are in between. the cities and the villages. They are in between for 22 months now, or even before, maybe even before. The Saudis evacuated the residents from the villages and the cities in and towns in the in the south uh, uh, two weeks before it started the aggression in 26 of March 2015. So the big problem with Saudi Arabia is uh, why uh, they don't want any enemy to be in its land because uh, uh, this causes a big embarrassment. Because Saudi Arabia is saying, I, I am not meddling, 
I'm not. I'm just uh, helping. I'm just uh, mediating. I'm there only at the request of the legitimate government. And these uh, 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 lies, uh, unfortunately, but Yemenis uh, will never ever withdraw. And they said this many times, many times, that they will never ever withdraw from the Saudi territory until Saudi stop or until the aggression and the blockade and the aggression stop and the blockade lifted. Otherwise, no. And yeah. there, of course, they are uh, now they, they disagree on the on the guarantee. Many times, many months, they are talking about the guarantee. Saudi wants the guarantee. If Saudi, if Saudi says, if I stop the aggression, who would guarantee that Houthi would, would, would uh, withdraw? So, yeah. And uh, Houthi also and his allies would say, if I withdraw, who would guarantee that Saudi would stop the aggression? This is the problem. This is the big problem. Yeah. Well, and, uh, I'm sorry. We're, I'm just running so late, Nasser, and I got to go. But I just want to remind everybody that uh, the U.S. has provided all of the arms for the Saudis in virtually this entire thing. And it's widely reported in the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, the L.A. Times, and everywhere else that it's U.S. intelligence helping pick the targets and U.S. tankers refueling their jet fighters on their way, their fighter bombers on the way on their missions and all of the rest of it. So this is, and as, as you've said, and, and many others have said as well, uh, Nasser confirming your reporting that the people of Yemen blame America. They know this is an American war. They're not fooled by some plausible deniability here. This is what Barack Obama has done. Without doubt. Yes, without doubt. Yeah. Uh, let me just uh, add one more important thing for your agency to complete the picture. Sure. Very quickly that, now. Yes. Uh, UN, UN envoy is here in Aden, and tomorrow he's here in Sana'a. I don't like to talk about him at all because I don't... Uh, but I, I want to tell your audience that he is here in, 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 in Aden today in, uh, with uh, Hadi, and tomorrow he is here in Sana'a. He, he has now a plan uh, uh, that was bought by Kerry with three points. Three important points. The first one is a point, new uh, vice president, and Hadi will keep for months, four weeks, without any uh, doubt. And then the national government and uh, 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 surrendering the the army and uh, everything, army and weddings and everything to this national government. So Hadi Hadi is still refusing because... He doesn't want to go. This is why Hadi is refusing. Uh, but because now, uh, because uh, Saudi Arabia is fed up with Hadi because he couldn't do anything to Saudi Arabia, so Hadi will be out and there will be a compromised uh, vice president and the national government and then elections and uh, then... Uh, and all these things. Yep. All right, listen, I'm sorry I got to cut you here, but uh, I really got to go. But thank you so much for coming back on the show, Nasser. I really appreciate it. Okay, thank you very much. All right, so that is Nasser yeah. Arby reporting out of uh, Sana Yemen there for you. And find his uh, website at Yemen Alan. That's A L A A N dot com. Yemen Now. That's Scott Horton Show, scotthorton.org. LibertarianInstitute.org, uh, Twitter.com slash Scott Horton Show. Okay, thanks, guys. Hey, y'all. Scott Horton here for WallStreetWindow.com. Mike Swanson knows his stuff. He made a killing running his own hedge fund and always gets out of the stock market before the government-generated bubbles pop, which is, by the way, what he's doing right now, selling all his stocks and betting on gold and commodities. Sign up at WallStreetWindow.com and get real-time updates from Mike on all his market moves. It's hard to know how to protect your savings and earn a good return in an economy like this. Mike Swanson can help. Follow along on paper and see for yourself. WallStreetWindow.com Hey, I'm Scott Horton here to tell you about this great new book by Michael Swanson, The War State. In The War State, Swanson examines how Presidents Truman, Eisenhower, and Kennedy both expanded and fought to limit the rise of the new national security state after World War II. This nation is ever to live up to its creed of liberty and prosperity for everyone. We are going to have to abolish the empire. Know your enemy. Get The War State by Michael Swanson. It's available at your local bookstore or at Amazon.com in Kindle or in paperback.
Just click the book in the right margin at scotthorton.org or thewarstate.com.